Well, let's bring in business reporter Alexis Christophorus for more on this. Alexis, the Biden administration had already directed the Department of Energy to release another 10 million barrels. America leads the world in oil production, pumping millions of barrels every day. Yet strangely, the U.S. still buys oil from overseas. How can that be? This twist raises big questions about why a nation flush with oil can't use all of it. Today, we will discuss why differences in oil types, outdated refineries, and strict laws leave America stuck in this odd situation. U.S. oil production, a global powerhouse. The United States is the world leader in oil production, pumping nearly 19.4 million barrels each day. That figure is huge, especially when compared to countries like Saudi Arabia and Russia, which produce around 11 million barrels daily. It is hard to imagine such vast amounts when you think about our highways, gas stations, and everyday commutes. In America, oil is not just a resource. It is a vital part of our economy and a major contributor to our way of life. Across states such as Texas, North Dakota, and California, enormous oil fields stretch as far as the eye can see. These fields are filled with countless oil rigs and drilling platforms that work day and night. Over many years, American oil producers have invested in advanced tools and techniques to extract every drop of oil from the ground. Innovations like horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing have greatly increased production, allowing us to reach oil from depths that were once impossible to tap. Every day, the hard work of thousands of engineers, rig workers, and investors makes it possible for millions of barrels to flow from the ground. The equipment used today is far more sophisticated than the simple machines of the early oil boom. Yet behind these modern technologies lies a story of persistence, teamwork, and continuous improvement. Decades of effort have built a massive network of pipelines, rigs, and refineries that transport oil from the fields to fuel stations all across the nation. This enormous scale of production not only powers our vehicles and industries, but also plays a crucial role in the global oil market. Even a small change in daily production can shift oil prices around the world, affecting economies far and wide. Local communities in oil-rich regions have grown and prospered because of this industry. Many small towns have transformed into thriving centers, where businesses flourish and families enjoy a higher quality of life. For all its impressive output, the story behind U.S. oil production is more complex than the numbers suggest. It is a mix of technological breakthroughs, economic drive, and long-term investments that have made America a true oil powerhouse. The success of the U.S. oil industry stands as a tribute to the hard work and ingenuity of countless people who have dedicated their lives to this field. Fascinating, isn't it? But if America produces so much oil, why does a problem still linger? Let's decode this mystery now. The consumption paradox, producing more, yet importing oil. Even though the United States is the top oil producer, it also turns out to be the largest oil consumer in the world. This is quite a puzzle. Imagine having a huge garden that grows plenty of vegetables, yet you still go out to buy more from the store. That's similar to what happens with American oil. The U.S. pumps millions of barrels every day, but at the same time, it needs to import oil to fill the gap between what is produced and what is needed for everyday use. The numbers tell an interesting story. While the U.S. produces nearly 19 million barrels of oil daily, its oil consumption is even higher. This extra need comes from many areas such as transportation, industry, and household use. Factories, trucks, and cars all depend on oil to run and the demand is so high that domestic production alone does not meet it. This means that even though our oil fields are busy, our refineries and distribution networks can't keep up with the huge demand from various sectors of the economy. One big reason for this gap is the type of oil produced in America. Most of the oil we get here is light crude, which is different from the heavier oil that many refineries are designed to process. Think of it like trying to fit a round peg into a square hole the oil doesn't match well with the equipment. This mismatch means that refineries sometimes find it easier and cheaper to import oil that fits their systems better. In simple terms, our domestic oil, even in large quantities, isn't always the right kind for our refineries. Another factor is the infrastructure. Much of the equipment and pipelines in the U.S. were built many years ago with one type of oil in mind. Over time, technology and market demands have changed, but the old setup remains. This means that the oil we produce at home often has to go through a refining process that is not fully optimized for it. When refineries cannot process the oil efficiently, the gap between production and consumption widens, 
and importing oil becomes a more attractive option. On top of that, market forces and economic decisions play a role. Sometimes it is simply cheaper to buy oil from abroad due to lower extraction costs in other countries. These external sources offer oil that meets the specifications of modern refineries at a lower price. This economic choice, driven by cost and efficiency, adds another layer to the paradox. Overall, the U.S. faces a complex situation. It has the resources to produce enormous amounts of oil. Yet a combination of oil type, outdated processing equipment, and cost factors forces it to depend on imports. The consumption paradox is not just about numbers. It is about the way the entire oil market works in practice. Can you believe this mismatch between production and consumption? What other factors could be deepening this gap? Let's discuss further. Infrastructure and refinery challenges. Before oil can fuel our cars or heat our homes, it must be refined and processed into usable products. In the U.S., this whole journey depends on a network of pipelines, rigs, and refineries. But here's the catch. Most of this infrastructure was built decades ago to handle heavy crude oil. Back then, heavy oil was the norm, and the refineries were designed with that in mind. Today, however, much of the oil produced in America is light crude, a type that doesn't mix well with equipment set up for heavy oil. Imagine a giant puzzle where the pieces just don't fit perfectly. The light oil is faster and less dense, which makes it harder for old refineries to process efficiently. When the machinery isn't a good match for the product, the result is a bottleneck that slows down the whole process. There's also the challenge of geography. Many of America's oil fields are located far from the refineries. For example, oil is often pumped out of places like North Dakota or Texas, while many of the refineries were built near older oil fields or along coastal areas for easier shipping. This means oil has to travel long distances through pipelines or by tanker, which adds extra time and cost. These long journeys increase the chances of delays and even accidents, and they add to the overall expense of getting oil from the field to the fuel pump. Upgrading or replacing these old facilities is a massive financial and logistical challenge. Modernizing a refinery isn't as simple as swapping out a few parts. It can mean rebuilding large sections of the plant, installing new equipment, and training workers on the new systems. All this work requires huge investments, often running into hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars. For many companies, the cost of modernizing is hard to justify, especially when the existing setup still works, albeit not perfectly. Moreover, the challenge isn't just about money, it's also about time and coordination. Refineries are complex operations, and any changes must be carefully planned and executed. Disruptions during upgrades can lead to production halts, which further affect the supply chain. The balancing act between maintaining current production and investing in future upgrades makes the situation even trickier. Does this infrastructure gap explain the oil mystery? No. Let's look into cost and policy, economic and political factors, the Jones Act, and cost issues. Economic factors and laws play a huge role in America's oil story. One big rule is the Jones Act, a law from 1920 that says goods moved between U.S. ports must travel on ships built, owned, and crewed in America. This rule can make shipping oil across the country a lot more expensive than buying oil from abroad. Think of it like buying a fancy gadget that costs way more here than in other countries. High costs in the U.S. don't stop at shipping. The cost of labor, land, and equipment here is much higher than in many other countries. For example, Workers earn more, and land is expensive. All of this adds up, making domestic oil processing more costly. Even though American oil production is huge, the money needed to process it fully at home is steep. Companies often find that it is cheaper to import oil that's already refined to the right standards. Political decisions over the years have also locked in the current system. Regulations set long ago were made with a different type of oil and market in mind. These rules have not kept up with changes in oil production, leaving many U.S. refineries stuck with old methods that are expensive to run. It's like trying to use an old computer for new software. It might work, but it's not efficient and costs more in the long run. Because of these factors, even if America produces plenty of oil, it sometimes makes more financial sense to import oil that is cheaper to process. When the cost to refine domestic oil are so high, companies choose the option that saves them money, even if it means relying on foreign oil. This situation is not just about supply and demand. It's also about how money flows in the oil industry. 
Take everyday budget decisions as an example. Imagine you need a new phone. If the local store sells it for a very high price, but you can buy the same phone for less from an online shop overseas, even after paying for shipping, you'd choose the cheaper option. This is similar to the oil market, where the overall cost, including labor, transportation, and processing, makes importing oil more attractive. Over the years, government policies have encouraged this trend too. Regulations to reduce fossil fuel use and promote clean energy have led to fewer investments in modernizing domestic refineries. This makes the whole system even less efficient for processing the oil produced in America. When policies are set in stone and hard costs are high, the system tends to favor cheaper imports over expensive domestic processing. All these economic hurdles and strict laws have created a situation where America, despite its enormous oil production, finds itself relying on imported oil to meet its needs. The balance between production, cost, and policy keeps the system locked in a way that is hard to break without major changes. When high costs and strict laws add up, what drives the oil market? Are these economic hurdles forcing us to import more oil? The next part might surprise you. Environmental policies and shifting energy priorities. In recent years, environmental policies have become a major force shaping the oil industry. The U.S. government now pushes hard to reduce fossil fuel use and promote cleaner energy sources like wind and solar. This shift is driven by a growing awareness of climate change and a desire to protect natural resources. At the same time, these policies change how oil is used in the country, making it harder for domestic oil to play the role it once did. Modern U.S. policy aims to cut back on fossil fuels, which means new rules often restrict oil drilling in sensitive areas. For example, large parts of places like the National Petroleum Reserve in Alaska are now off limits for drilling. Such restrictions are meant to protect wildlife and natural habitats. But they also mean that there is less oil available for use domestically, even when the country produces so much. This creates a tension between the goal of energy independence using our own resources and the need to protect the environment. The push toward green energy also affects investments in the oil sector. As more money goes into renewable energy projects, there is less incentive to upgrade old oil refineries or build new ones. Many companies now see long-term benefits in investing in cleaner energy rather than pouring billions into fossil fuel infrastructure. This trend has led to fewer updates in the domestic oil industry, which further widens the gap between production and consumption. At the same time, many Americans are beginning to favor renewable energy sources for daily use. Solar panels on rooftops, wind farms in rural areas, and electric vehicles are becoming more common. This shift in public opinion adds extra pressure on the oil market. It makes the idea of relying solely on domestic oil seem less attractive, even if it is produced in large quantities. In some ways, the move toward renewables is like a gradual change in the way people think about energy. It is not just about economics. It is about the future of our planet. There is also a strong cultural push to reduce our carbon footprint. Many people now believe that cutting fossil fuel use is essential for a healthier environment. As a result, policies are set that aim to lower emissions, even if it means reducing the use of oil produced in America. These measures are balanced against the need for energy, creating a complex puzzle where environmental goals and energy needs do not always match perfectly. Is America on track for a cleaner energy future? How are green policies reshaping our oil story? New insights, the future of oil in a changing energy landscape. Recent studies and industry reports offer a fresh look at the future of oil. One new insight comes from a recent article that examines how digital tools are changing oil production. The report shows that advanced sensors and data analytics are now used to monitor oil wells in real time. These tools help companies spot problems before they happen, cut down on waste, and make production more efficient. This technology change could help resolve some of the current issues in the oil industry. Another interesting case study comes from a small region in the Gulf where companies have started blending renewable energy with traditional oil operations. In this pilot project, solar panels and wind turbines power parts of the oil extraction process. The idea is to reduce the overall cost and environmental impact of producing oil. Early results are promising, suggesting that a mix of old and new methods might be the key to a more sustainable oil future. At the same time, the global shift toward renewable energy is steadily growing. As wind, solar, and other green sources become cheaper and more efficient, the role of oil may gradually decrease. 
Many experts believe that in a few years, oil will no longer be the main driver of energy use. Instead, it could become one part of a larger, more balanced mix that includes many types of energy. This change is already visible in countries that have set ambitious goals to reduce fossil fuel use. Innovations in the oil sector are also on the horizon. Some companies are testing new methods to refine oil with less energy and fewer emissions. Others are exploring ways to use biotechnology to break down oil residues and turn them into useful products. These potential breakthroughs could lower costs and reduce the environmental impact of oil production. If these ideas take off, they might help solve the current mismatch between oil production and its processing. Economic, technological, and policy trends are all pushing the oil industry to evolve. Governments around the world are starting to set stricter rules on emissions and investing more in renewable energy. At the same time, new technology is making it possible to do more with less. This mix of changes could reshape the entire energy landscape, making oil just one part of a diverse energy future. Thank you for watching our in-depth look into why the U.S. can't use its own oil. Share your thoughts below and subscribe for more insights into energy puzzles today.